Well, if you've ever been to the hospital, you've likely come across one of these. It's a pulse oximeter. It's the little thing that they put on your finger. It has that red light inside. It's a pain-free and non-invasive way to measure the oxygen in a person's blood. And it took on a critical role during the COVID pandemic when respiratory uh, distress was a key symptom. But research says that pulse oximetry has a fatal flaw. It doesn't work as well with darker skin. And as we prepare for an increase in COVID cases, flu and RSV, pulse oximetry and its limitations could move back into the spotlight. Respiratory distress was a hallmark of the early days of COVID. The most common tool to assess how much oxygen is in a person's blood is a pulse oximeter. It's the little device that shines a light through a finger or a toe and measures the light on the other side. It's been called a game changer. I use it all the time to tell me how someone's oxygen levels are, whether we need to give them more oxygen, whether we need to bring them into the ICU. Or even put them on a ventilator. Dr. Thomas Valley says the problem is that anything that blocks that light from reaching the other side of the pulse oximeter can make the device show an artificially high blood oxygen reading. And that can include darker skin. So that means a pulse oximeter is telling us that someone's oxygen level is 90 4% when in actuality it might be 87%. A value when doctors would typically provide support. Valley is a co-author of a study that finds that black patients are three times more likely to have a low blood oxygen level missed by pulse oximeters. Valley says those misses are a matter of life and death. When we made decisions to put someone on a breathing machine, it was based on someone's oxygen levels being low, and it, these were based on pulse oximeter values. He says the result is delayed treatment, greater risk of organ failure, or greater risk of death. I took an at-home blood oximeter out on the streets of Metro Detroit. There you go, 99% is your oxygenation. To see what Metro Detroiters feel about hearing this news. It's a very surprise. Of course it's a concern. Medical devices that uh, do not work properly with, uh, let's just say, our people, mm -hmm. Is bad, especially considering it's been 30 years. This technology has been in existence, and nothing's been improved about it. Um, it's definitely important that everybody gets the same health care. That's right. This issue was first highlighted back in 1990, and it's still an issue today. Dr. Valley says the other way to measure blood oxygenation is a more invasive, more painful arterial blood sample, which may require a visit to the ER to find someone with the needed skills. It's a barrier to care. Until we have pulse oximeters that work accurately for all people, we are disadvantaging people of color. Now, I reached out to Medtronic, the largest medical device company in the world. In a statement, the company says in part, our pulse oximetry devices meet or exceed current FDA requirements and we stand behind their safety and efficacy. The effect on skin pigment, the effect of skin pigmentation on Nelcor pulse oximeter performance has been presented in our own retrospective analysis and an independent lab research at the November FDA Advisory Committee on pulse oximetry. The bias across all pigmentation levels is small and not clinically significant. Now Medtronic goes on to say that it's working collaboratively with the FDA and other organizations to develop pulse oximetry less affected by skin pigment.